What's going on guys? So in front of me, you are looking at an absolutely beautiful toy hauler from the folks over at Alliance. Today we are out here at the Houston RV show, specifically the Ron Hoover booth, taking a look at a bunch of new Alliance products that are out in 2023. And this is a really special one. So we're gonna go over this one. Hope you enjoy it. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Let's quickly start by taking a look at the numbers on this unit. So this is gonna have a 20,000 pound GBWR, it's gonna have a 4,054 pound cargo capacity, and it's gonna have a 15,886 pound dry weight. It's gonna ride on three 7,000 pound axles. So this is a big boy. This is a heavy, heavy toy hauler, and this is definitely one that I would recommend only towing behind a dually pickup truck, a modern day dually with the correct amount of cargo capacity for something this size. And this is also the type of trailer you really have to start understanding how much towing capacity you have as well because there are some gas trucks that don't have the towing capacity to be able to handle something this heavy so again my recommendation would be a diesel dually modern truck with you know that 25 26 plus thousand pound towing capacity at least and uh, ca cargo capacity probably upwards in the 5,000 pound range anyways we're going to take a closer look at the inside of this unit then we'll come back out and see what the outside's all about all right, coming around, I can already tell it has the level up hydraulic leveling system, six point. This is the 42V13 Alliance Valor Asdell sidewall construction, which is that composite sidewall construction, basically impervious to any type of delamination, which is really cool. All right, stepping inside, kind of panning around. Something very interesting about this toy hauler, and I want to see if you all can figure it out before I get to it. I'm not going to say it until I actually get to it in the tour, but it's different and it's very unique for most toy haulers. Not all of them, but most of them. All right. All right, we're going to start up here in the bedroom area, which is at the front overhang of the fifth wheel. Queen size bed in this unit. Nice flip up counter. You have three drawers here as well. TV already in place. Blackout blinds already in place. Up front here, you have a spot for washer and dryer hookups as well as dryer vent connections. Coming into the bathroom, you have two entries into the bathroom, one from the hallway, one from the master bedroom. Porcelain foot flush toilet with a soft closing lid. Really nice one piece shower stall in here. Thermofoil countertop with undermount stainless basin. Nice backlit or surround lit a uh, little medicine cabinet area, plus some storage up here for toiletries, things like that. More storage down here and underneath. All right, stepping down. Behind here are gonna be all your controls, plus a lot more storage up top, and you can see that it passes through into this space right here. So things that you load here, you can access from the side as well. You have your full size microwave. Uh, it looks like it might be convection, but I'm not sure. Yep, it is a convection microwave. Nice, ooh, that's real tile back here. Very nice backsplash. A lot of room around the stove, which is really nice. They definitely gave you a lot of room around the stove. Over here, pricing. 23 Valor 42 V13. The 13 stands for 13 foot long garage. Has an MSRP of 161,577. Discounted by 41,000, 41,578. Sale price of 119,999. You know, the pricing in these seems to be coming down a little bit overall. So they, they appear to be coming down to kind of pre-pandemic levels to some degree. They're still higher, but that, that gap is definitely narrowing. Reinforced drawers, three burner, graystone oven, stove combination, more cabinets down in the bottom, Everchill 12 volt refrigerator, and this is their residential style refrigerator. Very nice. Flush floors in the kitchen, and flush floors in the dinette area. Have a compact island right here big stainless steel basin sink a lot of storage underneath large pantry right here across from the island 
Now we're gonna get to that thing I was telling you about when I first stepped in here, which makes it unique from many toy haulers. Actually, this has a couple unique characteristics, but this one stands out to me because I walk through a lot of toy haulers. Freestanding dinette. Many toy haulers do not have a dining area inside of the floor plan. Some do, I know that there are models that do have it, but it's rare because they kind of perceive that the back bench seats in the garage can be used as your dinette space. So to have a dedicated dining area inside of the living room area or the kitchen space of, an, of a toy hauler is kind of rare. So that's really cool that they integrated it in. Solid surface Corian countertops, very nice. You have a huge theater style seat here. This folds up, so you have a center seat, USB connections, power connections, drink holders. Nice, nice large seating. And again, it can seat even more people if you flip that up. Big atrium window here with MCD roller shades. More storage up top. You have your TV right here, plus cabinetry above. And the cabinetry is not terribly deep up there, so it's only maybe about seven inches deep. So you'd be able to fit smaller things up there. Nice wide view panoramic fireplace, JBL sound system. I would open this door, but I currently can't because the, uh, the surround for the outside side patio is not deployed. But when we get outside, you'll see exactly what this is and what it would look like if it were. Coming around this way, you have a really nice thick glass door with a big rubber seal to prevent any of your toys smells from permeating into the living area. Out here in your garage, 13 foot long garage, blackout blinds, really, really nice bunk bed elevation system up here. And this is gonna give you the ability to sleep people up top as well as this area. And this also converts into a kind of a double bench seating area if you wanna do dinner or something like that outside. Don't have room to put the back patio down even though they did deploy the, uh, the ramp. But yeah, full back patio space. Really nice. TV, air conditioning, everything already in place. This unit does have three AC units as well. You have your spot for your washer and dryer connections back here also, which was kind of interesting because I think they also had it up front. So it appears as if you, uh, you have spots for both, front and back. Cross ventilation right here. There's your back cross ventilation. Then you have a really cool track system in here to be able to kind of adjust where you want your clamps and your tie downs for whatever toys you have inside of here. And you have a half bath. So you have a really nice half bath in here complete with mirror, nice cornered sink, porcelain foot flush toilet. And then this door would also take you out to that, that uh, side patio if it were already set up with the, the surround going around it. What do you guys think? Pretty cool floor plan, huh? Anyways, we're gonna step outside of this unit, see what the outside's all about. Okay, starting from the front, working our way back. You have your Kurt Rotaflex pin box up front. Big rubber bushing right here. This rotates, it helps dampen some of the vibration between the truck and the trailer and the trailer and the truck. You have some storage up front because this rides on a really small drop frame right there that enables you to have storage here as well as storage up front right here. And your generator is likely gonna be in one of these front storage containers, usually. This one's actually locked. And then you have another access right here, which will take you to your side storage area once we get there. Spot for 30 pound propane cans right here. You could probably fit even a 40 pound one in here. Well, if this sat lower, you probably could, but the way it's sitting right now, probably a 30 pound would be the most you could fit. Basement storage area. So check it out. So pretty good size storage. Um, I'm a little bit confused because I should probably open that front part up real quick thick baggage doors And what I'm talking about here is This right here is probably just going to be storage simply because there is not a spot For it to open up over there. So okay, so you have your hydraulic system here. You have your solar charge controller So more storage. So there's just a lot of storage down here more storage right here And I'm pretty sure this is where your generator would be, but it's currently locked I don't see an exhaust coming off of it. So this specific unit may not have, oh, there it is, right over there. The exhaust is coming down. So yeah, that's where the generator would be. I'm assuming it's an own-in generator. Okay, stepping around. So here is that side patio. It's down, 
but they don't have the uh, the actual patio surround down. But you can see you have a TV out here, and this opens up to a really, really nice side little area for you to entertain the family, especially if you're parked next to you know a campsite with a, a great view. Two large awnings, one awning over here, another awning over there. Aluminum steps take you into the back garage door area. You have some storage on this side. I believe it's an actual air compressor on this side. And they also put lithium ion batteries or a lithium ion battery up front in this unit also. Very cool. So coming around back, you have your ramp again. I'm not gonna be able to make it through there. So I'm gonna go ahead and go around to the other side. Okay, so I won't be able to get all the way to the back, but I can probably squeeze through enough to show you what's going on back here. Okay, so over here, you got your fueling station for both your generator as well as your toys. Got the pump over here, your 50 amp connection. You have a ladder to get onto the roof. Yeah, it was a little too tight for me. Underneath it, you have the Cree 3000 suspension. This is running all Sterling G-rated tires. You can see the box section underneath the frame. This runs on a 12 inch I-beam frame as well. All your sewer connections, rack and pinion slide over here. Very nice. Coming around this way, this is the outside of your water heater, outside of your furnace. Nice thick door over here. Nice motion detection lights. Your Nautilus panel, basically your water connection panel. Three inch bath deck. It's a good setup. What do you guys think of this unit? Again, it is a huge fifth wheel. And because of its sheer size, height, weight, width, all of that, you definitely wanna have the most capable tow vehicle you can to tow this. And if it's a dually pickup truck, um, you definitely wanna make sure that it has the right specs even there. And also understand what loading the back with toys does to the weight of the front. Because if you put something heavy enough in the back, you also have to realize that that's gonna take away some pin weight possibly or remove some of that weight. So this unit might actually be heavier whenever you don't have toys in the back simply because of that, essentially the balancing effect. Anyways guys, please leave a comment below. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.